Hello everyone, Gilligan Kruger, 0829 here, and welcome to the second day of my Batman movie series marathon review. Alright everyone, here it is, the big one. What is arguably one of the greatest films of the past decade, and what is officially one of the highest grossing movies of all time. Those two descriptions can only be about a Christopher Nolan film, and in this case, I think it's his personal best. I am of course talking about the 2008 superhero drama film... The Dark Knight. Why? Because everything in this movie comes close to or reaches perfection. The casting is phenomenal. The acting is great. The story is dark. And it's all done in this real complex tone that when you watch it, you can't help but realize why this movie did so well, both critically and financially. And since it came out in 2008, it has become one of my personal favorite movies, top five easily, and I'm here to explain why. So, I'm going to talk about The Dark Knight. So, this movie pretty much starts where Batman Begins left off. We have a group of men dressed as clowns, no less, robbing a large bank in Gotham. As it turns out, they are working for a character called the Joker, who is so iconic, I really don't have to introduce him any more than that, especially in this movie where he's portrayed by the late Heath Ledger. But that's not all that's going on in this movie. You see Batman and Gordon, played again respectively by Christian Bale and Gary Oldman, are trying to put down the mob, the organization that was led by Tom Wilkinson's character Carmine Valcone in the last movie. And they think they've found a solution in a new district attorney named Harvey Dent played by Aaron Eckhart. Now, Dent shows that he's very good at his job, and at first, they're really doing well. That is, of course, until the Joker issues a death threat on Gotham City. He is going to kill multiple people every night until Batman takes off his mask and reveals himself to the public. And this leads to the rest of the film being kind of like a fight between Dark... Batman, Dent, and Gordon, there I'm saying it right, against everything the Joker has, otherwise leading to chaos throughout the film. So, I kind of shortened the plot synopsis there a bit, because I really do have a lot to talk about. Let's talk about just how well this film actually did. The Batman Begins, for reference, made over $500 million in total grosses. The Dark Knight beat that record in about six days. Why? Because everyone I know has described this as the best in of not only the superhero genre, but the best of several genres. And, of course, there's a lot to like. It's a Christopher Nolan movie, but we'll get to him in a moment. Let's start with the casting. We've still got Christian Bale, who I think is a really good Bruce Wayne. He still has to do the sort of act like the wisecracker playboy type character, but still fight off his inner demons. If only he didn't do that in his lung cancer voice, everything would be great. But again, that's a silly little nitpick. I still really liked Bale in this role, and I really, for a live action version, I don't think I could cast anyone else. And you've got the other three returning characters from before. You've got Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, and Morgan Freeman. All of which kind of bring the same comedic relief here. But also, I think they're a lot more serious in this one, all of them. Because there are scenes like when Dent, who is dating Rachel, now played by Maggie Gyllenhaal, is talking to Alfred. And he asks the question, are there any psychotic ex-boyfriends I should know about? And... Alfred's like, ha, you have no idea, and just walks away, and that's a great sort of chuckle line. But, again, I really think they put more on the serious side this time, and it really pays off. And because of their performance in this movie, whenever I think of these three actors, this is the role I think of them in. When I think of Michael Caine, Alfred comes to mind. When I think of Gary Oldman, Commissioner Gordon comes to mind. When I think of Morgan Freeman, it's Lucius Fox. And God, of course. Oh! 
But there are a lot of new additions to the cast, and I kind of wanted to go into how they played out in the story here. Starting with Aaron Eckhart as Harvey Dent slash Two-Face, who I will admit when I first saw the trailer that he was in, I actually wasn't really all that impressed with it. I didn't think he was going to carry the movie at all, because everything I know about Batman I pretty much learned from watching Batman the Animated Series in growing up in the 90s, and especially this applies to the whole Harvey Dent Two-Face. That's when I learned that Harvey Dent ultimately becomes Two-Face. And for whatever reason, when I saw this character in the trailer, I just was saying to myself, that's not Harvey Dent. I can't buy them. There's no way he's going to carry this film. But... Ultimately, I was wrong because I think Aaron Eckhart gave one of the best performances in this movie. In fact, I wouldn't say it's so much the performance as it is the concept of the character here because Harvey Dent is kind of like the heir for Batman. Like, if Bruce Wayne decides to literally throw in the cape and not do this anymore, in comes Harvey Dent who can serve as Gotham's law enforcer without having to dress up and... In that sense, the ending is even all the more tragic because of that. And speaking of tragic endings, I want to talk about the CGI on the left side of Eckhart's face when he took on the role of Two-Face because it is phenomenal. It is both creepy and cool. I remember the first time I saw this was when it, the movie came out, summer of 2008, right after my sophomore year of high school, and they really build up Two-Face's face in this. Like, all the way they shoot it, he either has bandages or it's just shot from the right side of his face, so you can't see it. And then he finally turns, and you see it, and you probably jump back. You're like, whoa! I was not expecting that, because it's not like the two faces of old, where it's just this sort of Freddy Krueger-esque half that changes a different color. No, no, no. This one, his face is actually singed to the bone. You can see bits of his skull and bits of his teeth. And I just thought it was awesome. It might terrify younger viewers. That's what I think is cool about it. But again, I really think it worked well. And when you back it up with Eckhart's fantastic performance, you get a great character and a great side villain. So great job, Eckhart, and great job, CGI department. Another character, though, I want to talk about is the love interest, now played by Maggie Gyllenhaal as opposed to Katie Holmes. Now, Holmes dropped because she wanted to take more time with her daughter. This is what I'm led to believe, of course. And she wanted to do a smaller movie called Mad Money, which ultimately flopped both financially and critically. I wonder if she regrets taking that over one of the highest grossing movies of all time, but that's aside the point. The point is, as with any actor-actress change, uh, it is kind of distracting, I will admit it first, because you're seeing this character and thinking, she's acting different, she's looking different than what I had seen before, and it doesn't really help that Rachel is kind of more the damsel in distress this time around. But ultimately, it didn't get obnoxious, and I think Jalen Hall did well in the role. Even if you do see Katie Holmes at first, it's really not a problem. I thought this was still a decent character, and it was played out really well. So good job, Jalen Hall. But of course, the role everyone remembers was. Heath Ledger as the Joker. Why? Because Nolan didn't want J the Joker to be a supervillain in this one. He wanted him to be a friggin' terrorist. This guy is terrifying. Like, there's one scene where he makes this home video threat to Batman. This is where he announces his whole, Batman must take off his mask or I will start killing everyone, and it gets shown on the internet, and that is terrifying. Just the realism of this makes you believe that a character like the Joker could exist in real life. And that's always terrifying. I honestly don't know what more I could say about this character. He's just really creepy, and Ledger changed the way... In this performance, not just Ledger, but Nolan himself, these two work together and change the way we think of not only supervillains, but fictional villains in general. And despite Heath Ledger's sad passing, I'm not surprised at all he won all those Oscars. So rest in peace, Heath. You deserve it. 
And while we've brought up Christopher Nolan, though, he is the driving force behind this. Christopher Nolan, I would say, is this generation Stanley Kubrick. Why? Because he invites us into these worlds and gets us invested in these characters that sometimes you only get two, three, maybe four lines of dialogue. And it's, but it's more so the worlds because we don't only see Gotham in this movie. There's a small part where we go to Hong Kong. Bruce Wayne has to go there to take down a Wayne Enterprises associate who's been working with the mob. And just to see Batman soaring over the Hong Kong skyline and then fighting the tower is amazing. It's gripping. In fact, er the other action sequences in this film are gripping too. There's a Gotham street chase that's uh, really exciting. And of course, the climax is dark and creepy all the way through. Everything about this film is gripping. It's dark, it's compelling, it's complex. Pretty much every compliment you can say about a movie is in The Dark Knight. Now, there are a little itty-bitty nitpicks here and there, just like with Batman Begins. Like, I'll openly admit I didn't really understand the necess necessity of the multiple Batman scene at the beginning with the Scarecrow and whatnot. But again, that's a minor nitpick. I don't even think it's big enough to call it a nitpick. On a whole, this is a dark and complex drama that is both epic and flawless all in one. I did not think they'd be able to top Batman Begins even after seeing the Joker, but I was really surprised with this. I don't know what else I can say about it. It's just a great film. Easily one of, no, not great, phenomenal, fantastic action film. And it's clearer to me, as it was four years ago, why this is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I am hope I can be this excited when I see Dark Knight Rises at midnight tonight. So, for The Dark Knight, five stars out of five. You can find all my movie reviews on my YouTube channel. If you have a movie you'd like me to review, comment on this video or on my channel. Subscribe if you like. Until next time, peace.